Hey, I want to welcome you to this video of uh, my visit to the Norton Simon Museum in Pasadena, California. And um, if you're ever in the area, you should totally check this museum out. I just thoroughly enjoyed my time visiting with these impressionist paintings there and uh, spending some time. The guards were um, very patient with me and uh, I could get very close to the paintings and really study them. And so a big thank you to them for that. Um, it made my time there so much more enjoyable and valuable. The first one that greets you when you walk in is this portrait of a peasant by Van Gogh. And uh, just, the, just the blue alone against the, the yellow hat is like so stunning. And uh, I spent quite a bit of time studying this painting and I was really kind of taken back by how the um, the kind of light blue turquoise jacket was very uh, almost almost washy in a way, but the closer you get to this painting, these these eyes just really express um, you know s exactly what this one is sort of all about, and that's this this guy who's just beaten down by the sun, and uh, um, you can kind of uh, I don't know the intensity was just really there. And when you got into the upper left-hand corner of this one, um, I don't know, I just got lost in all of these strokes. And, and I couldn't help but think to myself, you know, we're all in there somewhere. And, you know, you see a little stroke and you go, man, that kind of looks like a stroke that I might have made or at one time or another. And that might be, you know, these little zigzags over on the left-hand side and just this directional brush change. Um, anyway... Um, just a beautiful, beautiful piece. And uh, the second one is this one by Corbet. Um, this was very, very thick uh, paint. And from a distance, um, it really had this such great depth to it. Um, and you got a real, you know, a real sense of this, maybe this rainstorm had just passed through and left a few puddles on the ground and uh, stuff like that. And, and you kind of had this beautiful afterglow uh, in the sky and um, the closer you get to it you really kind of understand what they say about him and how absolutely thick he lays paint on um, and it's, it's so thick I'm, I'm sure it's completely impossible for them not to uh, not to crack and, and stuff like that but I'm amazed at how detailed this painting looks at a distance and how loose it is close up and I will say in general all of the paintings that I saw there um, maybe it's just because that's what I'm thinking about at the moment, um, but I was really, really uh, attracted to that. But this kind of dark gray-blue line on the horizon really um, just really made this painting for me. And um, so anyway, beautiful, beautiful piece. Uh, the next one was by, uh, by uh, Bowden in... Um, the father of plein air as they say and this uh beach scene i was looking at the background at first with kind of these um kind of these muted gray blues that were um not really close in value but uh maybe close in chroma and uh kind of these uh, all of the different colors that are in this foreground was really shocking and but the thing that i noticed the closer i got to the painting and started to really study it was was this idea of there are primary figures and then there are all of these secondary supporting figures and the further you got away from the primary figure the less detail was applied to to the other figures and I think about in my own paintings how I spend so much time sometimes just really trying to dig into those details um, the uh, which I guess maybe that's normal for for most of us uh, but if you look to the far right of this particular one you can really see where those uh, uh, figures and things that just sort of blend together and you're not really exactly quite sure what it is but then the next painting um, that I'm going to show you here is actually by one of my favorite painters and that's Pierre Bonnard um, this is a portrait of Leila uh, which is, um, I actually, I don't, I never, I can't recall having seen this painting before until I was here. 
and uh, it was it was quite large and absolutely stunning for a bonard um, in, in my opinion and in contrast to some of the other paintings where there are these uh, thick impasto single stroke statements and things you can see where uh, where he would just uh, kind of smudge things together and um, you, you can see him painting on this and then going back in and maybe smudging it or wiping it out with his rag and and then uh, stepping back and scrubbing in something else and um, I also found it really interesting that the the face of this particular subject is where the kind of the heaviest paint is and when you get to the the chair um, itself the arms and stuff are actually just very much uh, a wash there's very little uh, very little paint there and it was obviously put on with a uh, a lot of paint thinner and um, but the almost the whole thing was that way but I found it interesting that it, these smudges and things that you see here didn't really, they don't read as that from a distance, which, uh, which was really kind of cool. But this face, um, you know, everything is sort of uh, maybe flat. Um, I mean, the light is there, obviously, and it creates the structure and the, the roundness and everything of it. But I was quite amazed by how smooth um, the surface was almost like, uh, almost like more of a Renaissance type, type painting, but beautiful eyes here. They really kind of draw you in. Um, the next one was another Van Gogh, this, uh, still life, um, from pretty early in, uh, in his painting career. And I think it, for me, it really kind of displayed and kind of gave vision to, um, to what was going to be to come from him. I mean, when you look at the the way some of the objects in this uh, particular piece are painted, uh, there are some sections of the uh, wine bottle, and then there's this uh, kind of uh, jar uh, vase in the background, and, and um, I'm zooming in on that so you can see it. Number one, I really like the highlights that are on it, but the strokes that are there, really kind of give uh, a clue to the painting style that Van Gogh would eventually be kind of uh, kind of headed towards. And um, the background was sort of nondescript, um, not not important, so to speak, and just washed in there. Um, but the rest of it was just absolutely uh, really, really cool to uh, to look at. The uh, next piece, was one that uh, kind of took me by surprise. I was actually kind of surprised when I saw it. I would have not have probably picked it out as a Renoir. It's not one that I had um, actually ever uh, seen before. And I spent quite a bit of time really looking at this painting because it's another one of those that has a fair amount of, a fair amount of detail but when you get really close, it's actually um, it's actually a very loose uh, detail, and uh, the structures even themselves are, you know, I for some reason I get these hard edges and things when I paint structures like this. But he there's a vibration to his that um, that don't exist in in uh, in my paintings that I, I were really really cool and. But the thing that really drew me into this painting was were these shadows in the foregrounds that just really led you right into the space. And they were these awesome blue-gray um, colors. And they were right there in the very bottom front of the painting. And they did such an amazing job of just sort of just sort of sucking you into the to the whole scene. The next one is a Monet, and uh, this one too I had never seen before and enjoyed uh, spending quite a bit of time uh, studying it. it uh, when I saw it from a distance, I had no idea it was a Monet. Um, and it too just ha has this amazing feel of, uh, you know, if you look at the values in the water and the values in the sky, um, they're 
uh, they're very close together. However, they maintain their their order. You know, the sky being the lightest and the flat surface is the next. But when I started looking closely at this water, these blue grays in the waves, um, I actually couldn't find any thing that looked like blue, just blue to me. Um, they, these were very gray colors and, and the greens, but I was looking closely at the varying shades of gray and green within the little sections of, uh, of water, which is really like, I don't know, I was just totally going to school on that. Um, this next one by, is by uh, Corot, and it, uh, um, the greens in this one are, are, are what I found just super attractive. And I kind of like this this field of uh, of green that these ladies are standing in, and then the trees are just very uh, sort of this hazy uh, olive green color um, set against a very light sky, and the uh, uh, kind of the natural look of uh, the trees in the very background. And here you can actually uh, you can actually see just how loose those trees are, and yet just by a few wisps of uh, trunks and branches, how they just sort of come to life. And they, again, there are very almost no hard edges in this whole thing, except in this man-made chimney here. Well, obviously the whole house is man-made, but um, but still the edges are not like really 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 hard and I noticed how the figures are very loosely done and really not overdone and I can get so wrapped up in detail uh, and it was just nice to see some of these curvy lines and things in the roof of this uh, of this house here anyway um, man I, I uh, am so glad that I had the opportunity to share this with you and I will say if you were ever in the Pasadena area I would say take some time and really view this Norton Simon Gallery uh, and plan to spend a few hours there because I spent I spent hours just in the Impressionist section alone and you know there's an, the same quantity of paintings I've shown you here that I could do another video of and and go through this whole thing again and I could spend so much more time talking about these but I just wanted to share this experience with you and uh, just say just how phenomenal this little collection was um, and there were a couple of other Van Goghs uh, and just a lot of other uh, amazing paintings by Boudin and 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 others and um, yeah so anyway um, you know thanks for uh, checking out the video and I really do appreciate it as always and if you're not a subscriber I invite you to subscribe and I will uh, I will catch you later